Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Hear the affirmation. Listen to my prayer, Lord. Because of your faithfulness, hear my requests for mercy. Because of your righteousness, answer me. Psalm 143, 1. Our theme psalm this week is Psalm 125. Today from the King James Version. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous be put forth their hands into iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for much as turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Let us pray. Like the mountains that surround Jerusalem, surround us, O Lord, in moments of weakness and vulnerability. Be with us always, that we may never be shaken, Protect and comfort us with the assurance of your presence in times of deepest need. Amen. Friends, our theme this week is vulnerability. Vulnerability, a tough theme for many of us. But hopefully, as we live throughout this week, we can experience vulnerability with ourselves, with God, with those around us. Today's anthology reading comes from one of the authors of our work, Reuben Job. The twelve all had a good beginning with Jesus. Their signs of loyalty, fidelity, and faithfulness came often in their brief time with Jesus. And yet, in many of the crucial times for Jesus and for them, the truth is that they drifted astray. They lost sight of Jesus and his way and focused on themselves and their way. A good beginning is wonderful to experience and to observe. Even more wonderful is to see a woman or man full of years and still full of goodness and faith. To observe a marriage that is marked by fidelity and unqualified love after half a century of living brings hope and encouragement to all those who desire a strong family and strong community. Faithfulness is a wonderful thing to experience and to observe. Some congregations have remarkable and almost miraculous beginnings, beginnings that are marked by rapid growth and transformation of nearly every life that enters their sphere of ministry. These congregations, transforming ministry, touches every part of their community, and that community is forever changed. Faithfulness is a wonderful thing to experience and to observe. There are denominations that carry a precious part of the gospel treasure in such a faithful way that the world is a better place because God has given them life. Their faithfulness in good times and bad, in wealth and poverty, provides direction and encouragement for all those who choose to live a life of goodness and holiness. Faithfulness is a wonderful thing to experience and to observe. The bad news is that individuals, congregations, and denominations can drift astray. It happens so easily. It happens the moment we take our eyes off Jesus Christ. The moment we lose our center, we begin to lose our way. 
we know it does not have to be that way. Because every day we keep our eyes upon Jesus Christ and ask for guidance and grace to remain faithful. The good news Christians share is that Jesus Christ is able and willing to guide and enable us on our journey towards our true home with God. May God bless the reading from Bishop Job today. I love the story of Peter walking on water. Uh, their disciples are out in the boat. Peter is uh, there with them. Jesus comes walking on the water in the midst of the storm. Peter calls to Jesus, asking Jesus to call him forth. If it's really you, call me and I will come. Peter steps out of the boat and walks on water. But the storm is still raging. When his eyes are fixed upon Jesus, quite literally, he's fine. He's walking on water. When he focuses on the storm around him, on the crashing waves, he starts to sink. I think that's what Bishop Job is trying to get at. This idea that when we fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, as the epistle says, we're likely headed in a good direction. But when we get distracted, when we are led astray, sometimes even by things disguised as Christian or Christ-like, we begin to sink. Part of our vulnerability is the willingness to cry out, as Peter did, Lord, save me. And just like Peter, I believe Christ will reach down, pick you up, and bring you safe to shore. Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 12, starting in verse 1. So the Lord sent Nathan to David. When Nathan arrived, he said, There were two men in the same city, one rich, one poor. The rich man had a lot of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing, just one small ewe lamb that he had bought. He raised that lamb, and he grew up with him and his children. It would eat from his food and drink from his cup, even sleep in his arms. It was like a child to him. Now a traveler came to visit the rich man, but he wasn't willing to take anything from his own flock or herd to prepare for the guest who had arrived. Instead, he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the visitor. David got very angry at the man. He said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, the one who did this is demonic. He must restore the lamb seven times over because he did this and had no compassion. You are this man. Nathan told David, This is what the Lord of God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from Saul's power. I gave your master's house to you and gave you his wives into your embrace. I gave the house of Judah and Israel. If that was too little, I would have given even more. Why have you despised the Lord's word by doing what is evil in his eyes? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword and taken his wife as your own. You used the Amorites to kill him. Because of that, you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite as your own. The sword will never leave your own house. This is what the Lord says. I'm making trouble come against you from inside your own family. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives away and give them to your friend. You will have sex with your wives in broad daylight. You did what you did secretly, but I will do what I am doing before all Israel in the light of day. I've sinned against the Lord, David said to Nathan. The Lord has removed your sin, Nathan replied to David. You won't die. However, Because you have utterly disrespected the Lord by doing this, the son born to you will definitely die. Then Nathan went home. 
there's a lot going on in this passage and a lot going on before we get to this passage in the story. The 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 brief summary is um, David alone, basically in Jerusalem, having sent out most of the men to war, uh, is hanging out. He sees uh, Bathsheba off in the distance bathing, uh, is captivated by her, uh, goes to her. What happens next uh, certainly could be considered non-consensual. Uh, that's how I take it. I know not everyone is at that point. Either way, he then conspires to have her husband, she is married, killed in battle. He is a general, brings him up to the front. He is killed and takes her as his own. Uh, they do have a child. The first child is uh, premature or dies in childbirth. Uh, the second child, uh, we do know his name is Solomon. But uh, again, whether whether that's really God's judgment or that's how David, Nathaniel, the others perceive that, I think that's up for interpretation. What isn't up for interpretation was David didn't see what he was doing was evil. Clearly from the outside, very evil. And Nathan had to kind of give him a parable to face him with what he has been doing. And he was able to become vulnerable. And you can read the Psalms where he he responds to that. Uh, and he was able to turn around and repent and, and, and do better. The question for us is when we are held accountable, do we stand up and say, I have sinned against the Lord. I, I, I have gone off the path. I have missed the mark. Or, or do we double down? Like most of us do, I think. When faced with, conflict when faced with someone uh holding us accountable I'm, I'm not saying saying just kind of being a jerk right but but truly someone someone beloved someone uh, close to love someone truly uh great intentions and and a great heart coming to you saying hey i've noticed this or i've seen you doing this and I don't know that's how you want to represent yourself, or I don't know that that's fair to the other person, or I know you're perceiving this situation like this, but could it be this way instead? Many of us double down. Many of us get defensive. I mean, it's just our human condition. It's it's kind of our reflexes, our fight and flight. But can we be vulnerable enough to say, you know what? I might be wrong. Can we hold the gospel with an open palm and not a clenched fist? Or our faith? Can we make room at the table for others we may not always agree with or for others who may not look or act or think like us? Can we just be vulnerable in our lives to sharing with other people, to bringing people close and even though that might lead to being hurt? Because when we do, I believe we grow in trust and love and we grow closer to the divine in so many blessed ways. It is the beginning of our week. And so we give thanks to God and praise God's name. Spend a minute thanking God for everything good in your life and praising God for the blessings you have received. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 
praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.